Hi everybody and the warmest welcome to Connecting Cultures. My name is Diaz and I'm here to show you the best, easiest and fastest way to submerge a little bit into Chinese culture in order to see our new hero, an expert in traditional Chinese medicine and a lovely man to have a chat with. Follow me. Dr. Zhang has been working in medicine for many years and is passionate about his business to this day. In his opinion, traditional Chinese medicine is not only acupuncture. These are herbs, proper nutrition, physical activity, and more. Chinese doctors should first of all have excellent health himself, leading a healthy lifestyle, not having bad habits, and being a positive person. Everything in the complex is important. And also, says Zhang Sui, it is necessary to smile and preferably in the morning. In Kazakhstan, Dr. Zhang has been practicing no more than two years. But he already has a lot of clients. Doctor says it is not about him, but about the fact that people believe in ancient traditions of medicine. I have never been to China, but when I came in here, it seemed to me that everything is decorated like in China. Yes, we try to make everything so once the person enters our center, it immediately makes him feel a special atmosphere. So you are a representative of traditional Chinese medicine. Yes. Can you tell the story of traditional Chinese medicine? Chinese medicine is more than 5,000 years old. Medical science is an important component of traditional Chinese culture. The health exercises and recipes of ancient China are quite diverse. But they have a solid foundation, knowledge and understanding of the structure of the human body and the basic principles of its functioning. The approach to treatment of ancient Chinese doctors was similar to modern. At first, it was a symptomatic therapy, starting to treat the patient. Doctors of ancient China reversed primarily the main symptoms of the disease, the ones that most worried the patient, and tried to treat them. After alleviating the condition of the patient, doctor tried to treat the root of the disease. That was the purpose of the treatment. Therefore, sometimes the treatment continued for a long time, despite the fact that the patient already felt healthy. Today, traditional Chinese medicine is common in many countries of the world. And this is not only a national treatment system, but also an important component of China's culture. Dr. Zhang says it's part of the science of life raising, which includes dieting, psychophysiological practices, and various types of gymnastics. Chinese medicine is not just a set of knowledge, it's a combination of medicine and philosophy, it's a special view of the world. And when you come to such center, it is important to feel whether you want to be treated here or not. And it is also very important to choose a clinic in which all traditions of Chinese medicine are fully respected. Everything is important here, without an exception. For a follower of traditional Chinese medicine, man is a small world. And affecting on one point or certain organ can trigger a whole cascade of reaction, which can, depending on a doctor's qualification, either harm or, on the contrary, lead to rapid recovery and recovery of the several diseases at once. It is a small center in the center of the capital, but here you feel almost like in China. There's even all attributes with some Chinese symbols. 
когда вы заходите в дом. When you enter the house to an ordinary Chinese, is the house decorated with a tail of peacock to attract luck? Yes, of course, many people have it. In each house there's something related to the peacock. According to the Feng Shui, peacock is a symbol of beauty, joy and immortality. And because of an interesting color of peacock's tail, that bird is considered a symbol of wisdom. Besides, the same meaning has carried by the image of the peacock and its feather. Chinese believe that seeing a peacock with an open feather is a sign of great luck. So you can often see this kind of interiors in the houses of the Chinese. And this is another symbol, peony. If you ask Chinese what flower is the king of the plant kingdom, he will immediately point to the peony, the symbol of the heavenly empire, the royal flower, the embodiment of wealth and fine luxury. A lot of attention was paid to the peon by the masters of Feng Shui, who believed that this flower attracts luck and love, as well as symbolizes everything good in the life of human. But most importantly, the peonies have the power of healing. Everything in our country is very symbolic. See, there is a peacock on the vase too. These are pictures with a meaning. I would like to ask, why boys have this kind of haircut? Well, it is just a style, there is no meaning in it. Fun is fun, but to me, a man absolutely far from Chinese medicine, and especially from traditional Chinese medicine, it was still interesting to understand how Chinese doctors placed this very point on the human's body. How it works. Acupuncture points on the body in Chinese medicine are called biologically active and important because each of them is responsible for certain organs and systems. And if you're able to use this knowledge, you can improve and strengthen the body, learn to easily cope with any diseases. And these most biologically active points are located on almost every part of the body. But knowing them all and being able to properly influence them is real science. And that's what we, Chinese healers, have been learning it throughout our lifetime. But Chinese healers make a diagnosis after taking pulse rate. And there are special points here too. Each point corresponds to a particular pair of internal organs, particularly the heart and small intestine, lung and large intestine. By the way, Chinese medicine describes dozens of pulse varieties, each of which exactly reports on the state of an organ. And you know what was unexpectedly discovered by Dr. Zhang here in Kazakhstan while working? The fact that Chinese and Kazakhs often turn to healers for the same reason. The similarity of China and Kazakhstan is daily habits, which are the sedentary job and late sleep. Few people go to bed before midnight, and that's a bad habit. It's harmful to health. First of all, it negatively affects liver and kidney work, because at night these organs are simply obliged to rest and recover. And the first symptoms are dizziness and irritation. The most important thing I learned from Dr. Zhang's appointment was that we have to be able to relax. It is a very good skill, but living in a megapolis, it is mostly extremely difficult. We have to learn it. Considering Zhang Sui himself, despite his occupation, always finds time to walk around the city and get acquainted with the local culture. That's what inspires him and perhaps doesn't give a single chance to disease. I work from Monday to Saturday. On Sunday, I certainly go for a walk, visit museums, theatres, exhibitions. Recently, I went to the mosque. Sometimes, I just go to the park, even for half an hour. Even if it's cloudy weather, I walk and breathe air. You have very clean air, it's just magical. Even when I walk alone and it happens that I am lost, people always kindly and patiently explain me direction. But honestly, I didn't immediately get used to the culture of your country, and the first thing that surprised me was that a huge number of different nationalities live here.
，这个人这个呃文化思思想方面啊是有也有。I decided to move to Kazakhstan two years ago when I worked in Shanghai. There I met Kazakhs who studied or stayed in China on business. They told me about Kazakhstan, which I didn't know about before I met them. Then I began to study myself and learned that our countries are neighbors, and we cooperate in many spheres. And most importantly, talking to Kazakhs in China, I immediately drew attention to the fact that it is a very friendly, easygoing, and positive people. I began seriously think about coming and how I can be useful, and realized that I can continue my medical practice. 玩过，就是说，单独的跟你们国家人接触过，像找不到路了，向他们咨询，他们都会很耐心、热情的帮助我。Considering the fact that Dr. Zhang likes to walk and study the city in his spare time, we invited him to ride a tourist bus around our capital. And having set our minds on positive mood, we did not pay attention to rainy weather and the absence of an interpreter from Chinese to the language we understand. Dr. Zhang has already been to many places. Now wants to visit other cities. He's only seen them on TV so far. Dr. Zhang says Han Shatir looks like a big tent, and I say that is a big tent. Trying to figure out how many Chinese friends he has, or those who speak Chinese. Our secret guest says that works both in a bank and an embassy, and it can be assumed that there are people who speak Chinese. The most important thing: it's not boring. He says that in addition to friends from China, he has Kazakhs who immigrated from China and now live here. They are quite close and they keep in touch. Dr. Zhang was very grateful for the bus walk around the city. He says he's got an impressive charge of energy for the week ahead, and we also got valuable advice on how to be healthy. The master suggested that it is necessary to think positively and move more, so onwards and upwards. <laughs>